By the time of the Sui dynasty, Shaolin Temple maintained a team of guards as a safety and security measure, and all the members of the special team were strong, brave, and of course, very good at fighting. Their mission was simple, to protect the temple, and because of their responsibility, they came to be known to history as the Kung Fu monks. In effect, Shaolin Temple had its own armed forces 1,400 years ago. Those who doubt the authenticity of the story of the 13 monks rescuing the future emperor say that the fresco was not made during the Sui dynasty when the event is alleged to have taken place, but that it was made much later during the Ming and Qing dynasties. It is likely, they say, to be an artistic representation of a known story, and thus cannot be accepted as evidence the story itself is true. However, those who believe the story to be true have another argument that seems more convincing. Inscribed on a stone placed in front of the temple's Mahavira Hall is a royal edict from Li Shermin regarding the military exploits of 13 monks. The edict tells us that the monks were granted a considerable area of farmland and a water-propelled mill as a reward for their services, and one of the 13 was made an army general. The inscription even lists the names of the 13 monks. This will at first seem to be indisputable proof that the story of the emperor and the 13 monks is true. But unfortunately, the inscription has nothing to say about the monks saving the life of the emperor. Li Shimin gave Shaolin Si the so called the Jiquai Bailey. He didn't say that he was in the same place. 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 历史的事实就是如此。至于所谓“十三共生救唐王”的故事，与这个碑实际上没有关系，没有没有一个严格的文字上的关系，它只是这个碑的内容的一个延伸和发展。So what are the historical facts behind the inscription at Shaolin Temple? Between the late Sui and early Tang dynasties, wars between the central government and local warlords were frequent. In the third year of the reign of Emperor Gaozu of the Tang dynasty, the emperor instructed his son Li Shimin to lead an army on a punitive expedition against Wang Shichong, who regarded Luoyang as his territory. The battle would be crucial to Tang if it wanted to have a united state. However, there was another warlord on Hebei, Dou Jiandu, and he also constituted a major threat to Tang. To avoid being wiped out, Wang Shichong and Dou Jiandu decided to join forces and fight against the Tang Empire together. Dou Jiandu, in this situation, he sent 10 thousand soldiers from Hebei to Huang He to rescue Wang Shichong. So, in the midst of the Luoyang government, he was faced with a very difficult problem. He was forced to fight against Wang Shichong's army. On the other hand, 还要对抗窦建德过来的军队，可以说战争形势对李唐王朝来说，也可以说一场决定生死的一场战役。如果两军合在一起，那么势必来说，唐朝就遇到了很大的危险，有可能被这个王世充和窦建德所打败。那么这个时候，李世民就分兵一路，继续围攻洛阳。然后他就亲率大军到虎牢关，就是过去的五牢，到五牢关去迎战窦建德。那么在这个时候哎，可以说双方激战的是非常惨烈。At this critical moment, the monks of Shaolin Temple took sides, knowing that Li Shimin would one day be emperor. The temple dispatched its best Kung Fu masters, the monks, who would be called by later generations the 13 cudgel players. 
These 13 heroes sneaked into the place where Wang Shuchong was staying and after a sudden attack, captured and made off with his nephew, the general in charge of the defense of the city. The hapless nephew was then handed over to the Tang army. The next day, the nephew was beheaded at the city gate, right in front of Wang Shuchong's eyes. Soon, Tang troops engaged in a fierce attack. The city gate was smashed and Tang troops flooded in. At this, Wang Shuchong surrendered. Nomotan 就是胡老官大败斗剑的是具有同等的功劳 And so it seems that the famous story told for many generations of how the 13 monks rescued Li Shimin is fictional. Perhaps a more accurate description of the events would be the 13 cudgel wielding monks who lent Li Shimin a hand on the battlefield. Li Shimin would have seen the assistance provided by the Shaolin monks as valuable but limited. It didn't save his life, but it was of help. When Li Shimin stepped up to the throne, however, he presented Shaolin Temple with a dazzling reward. 1,500 hectares of land plus a dozen or more newly built halls. By that time, the number of monks at the temple had increased sharply, and around a hundred of them were Kung Fu Grand Masters. The reputation of Shaolin had spread far and wide, and so had the fame of their unique style of Kung Fu. The Shaolin style had been through a period of considerable development, and it was backed up with practical fighting experience on the battlefield. The techniques of Shaolin boxing reflect practical need, attacking and defending with ease. The moves may be solid to inflict a genuine blow or empty to confuse a rival. Shaolin Kung Fu teaches that one should follow a straight line each time one makes a fist blow, and there's a scientific basis to this as the distance between two points is the shortest. Following this principle uses the shortest time to fell a rival. This is a perfect example of the nature of Shaolin Kung Fu. It is highly practical and efficient. As Shaolin Temple grew in size and acquired more and more properties that needed protection, the need arose for its Kung Fu monks to lift their fighting technique to a higher level. Practicing Kung Fu became an important part of the monks' everyday life, and this tradition has continued to the present day. It is five o'clock in the morning at Shaolin Temple. This is the time when Kung Fu monks rise to practice. To the monks of Shaolin Temple, this is the most important part of the day. It is also the reason why so many children have come to live in the temple. These youngsters are not yet monks, and only after each of them reaches the age of 18 will they decide, of their own volition, to either become a monk or return to secular life. Young as they are, the children have to begin fundamental training now, and so every morning they do standing practice on plum blossom stakes. Moving easily and swiftly between the stakes is a basic skill of Shaolin Kung Fu. After practicing the horse riding step on these stakes for a hundred days, they will be able to leap into the air and fall steadily on their feet on the stakes. Only then will they begin to learn Shaolin boxing. Hanging head down is an important training exercise as it builds up the muscles of the legs, feet, waist and belly and it is also said to increase thinking power. One of the amazing techniques of Shaolin Kung Fu is the lizard walk, a routine that takes many years of practice to master. The lizard walk requires strong waist, belly and arm muscles as well as the ability to maintain balance. 
Practicing Kung Fu skills like this one keeps one energetic and in good health. Clearly, the Kung Fu techniques of Shaolin Temple are unique. They're quite unlike those taught in any other part of the country. The two-finger exercise is used to increase the force of one's fingers, so a practitioner can strike a rival's nerve points with power and accuracy. The iron cloth technique is used to make the body tougher, so it will be able to withstand a very hard blow. It is also a way to integrate force and qi, the essential air in one's body. Mastering this is a must for any beginner. These two techniques, like many others, are really only basic skills of Shaolin Kung Fu, even though today they're seen as the skills that represent the style. But many techniques were not born in Shaolin Temple. Shishou Throughout its history, Shaolin Temple invited famous Kung Fu masters to visit, so practitioners could compare notes on boxing and cudgel play. During the Five Dynasties period, the temple's abbot Fu Ju invited 18 Kung Fu Grand Masters to stay in the temple for three years, and the strong points that were discussed and exchanged in that time were recorded in a book called Boxing Techniques of Shaolin Temple. Ever since that time, the temple has been a gathering place for Kung Fu masters from far and wide. So in a nutshell, the reason why Shaolin Kung Fu could develop into the most influential school of martial arts in the world is its openness. Shaolin Kung Fu has always been prepared to adopt the best skills from the many other schools of martial arts in China. This in turn has enhanced its appeal among Kung Fu practitioners. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers and tuning in again next time for more stories about the Shaolin Temple and the Shaolin Kung Fu. I'm Qi Xiaoqing from CCTV International. Goodbye.